Welcome back to the News at 10. The National Company of the Year competition in affiliation with the Junior Achievement Nigeria program is designed to inspire innovation in students through entrepreneurship. The students picked up from schools across the country are given opportunities to compete while implementing their innovative ideas in Lagos. The winner of the finals will, rep will represent the country at the African Championships in Zimbabwe. Our correspondent, Orelu Ashenberry, reports. The search for creative minds should begin when they're young and fresh. And this is exactly what Junior Achievement Nigeria has been doing since 1999. Reaching over 650 students in 750 schools. Its aim is to encourage in and out of school youth to embrace entrepreneurship. And today is another chance for some minds to expose their innovativeness. The marketing and communications manager explained what it's all about. We have the regional winners of our regional company of the year competition. So from each state, so from the southeast, Abuja, Jos, Enugu and Portakot, the winners of all those competitions are here today to compete for the national title. So the winner today is going to proceed to compete with other JA Africa member nations. Aware of what is at stake, the contestants have put their best foot forward for the judges to see. With presentations of chandeliers, shower caps, games, electric signs and shampoos. That done, it's words of encouragement. First from the keynote speaker, who is the CEO of Junior Achievement in Africa. I encourage all of you students, as you think about your futures, to explore every option available to you and to define success and achievement by your own terms. The judges also passed the comments on what they have seen. I'm really impressed by what you've accomplished because it's one thing to start a business, it's another thing to actually make money with the business. And the fact that all of you have actually been able to generate you know, profit through your ventures, I think you, know, you deserve to just be applauded for that alone. All the way from Joss, ladies and gentlemen. As the countdown begins, tension mounts. In the end, there can only be one winner. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the first position actually goes to all the way from Ajagule. Make some noise. Make some noise. For the runners-up, it's a difficult pill to swallow, but they're filled with hopes of a better performance next time. The ideal of this vision is highly applauded, and it shows that those who support it are indeed proponents of the saying, the young shall grow. Oralu Ashonibare, Channel's Television News. The Anambra state government has flagged off the One Million Trees Planting campaign. Governor Willie Obiano says the initiative is aimed at protecting the environment and minimizing the impact of erosion. He made this known while inaugurating the project at the premises of the Professor Kenneth D.K. Library in Orca, the state capital. The project is in pursuit of a green environment for a healthier life and a vibrant ecosystem. The governor makes his entry to the venue and the program begins with a motivational presentation by some students who are also advocating One Child, One Tree initiative in schools. While tree planting is the act of planting trees for man use, trees can also start as decoration, a good source of raw materials, and they supply us with the three basic needs of life, which are 
clothing, shelter, and food. We are so lucky that we're in Africa, the place filled with riches of soil. Let us plant. Join me as we plant. Well, it is a government initiative. According to the committee chairman of Anambra State Government and One Million Tree Planting Initiative, Mr. Michael Lukonko, collective participation is key. And the State Commissioner for Agriculture assures that the trees to be planted will have both aesthetics and erosion control values. This is a should aim to get parts of Anambra State on par with the urban forest cities of the world, such as Washington, D.C. in the United States, Tokyo in Japan, and the Belfast in Northern Ireland. We've walked through um, all around the environment, especially uh, looking at uh, what we needed to do to make sure that these trees are the sort of trees that will give one the state aesthetic uh, of view and also trees that will be able to also save our soil. The governor says the exercise started about six months ago with about 400 trees and maintains that the initiative is significant to the state due to the erosion challenge. Well, with the challenges we are having on erosion, while Lagos, that was the smallest state, is growing into the sea, Anambra, that is second smallest, is dwindling because of the erosion challenges. You know, and the only way we can help to stop this is to avoid practices that encourage erosion. The event is capped with a symbolic planting of a tree by the governor and the launch of the One Child, One Tree campaign, which the governor says the Ministry of Education must see to the early exposure of pupils and students to tree planting in all schools in the state. The Delta State Government has directed all property or land owners to obtain the new certificate of occupancy through the new ICT centre. The transaction is expected to be online based as the State Deputy Governor, Kingsley Otwaro, explains that the process is geared towards job and wealth creation. This is the first time since the creation of Delta State that a firm decision is being taken by the State Government to sanitize property development. <laughs> Delta, located in the oil-rich region of Nigeria, is one of the states with the highest number of revenues. So far, there is no proper demarcation of landed property in many parts. We have told you at the initial that we are poised to ensuring that we create wealth and provide jobs for our people. We have also highlighted the fact that in our time, we want to ensure that we transform our environment through massive uh, urban renewal programs and projects. And this is one of such uh, uh, projects we are seeing. To the glory of God, the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, Jesus. Amen. Streamlining this is what the state government intends to do by creating a new ICT center where all landed property, apart from being recorded, will be issued new certificates of occupancy and the government says it is mandatory for all to participate. It's a demonstration of our commitment to giving you good service. I, just, I hope that with this commission today, all existing CFOs now remain invalid. For the people, the new regulation appears a bit unclear because the expectation is that there is usually continuity in governance. Except they are going to refund the former money. If they are not refunding the former money of the CFO, so why are they asking us to come back for a fresh CFO? If they are returning the former money, better, because you cannot ask us to pay fresh money again for what you said government have given to us. So if you are not giving us the money, that means they're criminal acts. People need to be given some consideration for somebody who buy a land for 150000 naira and you're asking him to do a C of O, and there's a flat rate of 250,000 naira. It looks quite on the high side. Whether or not this government's decision is popular will depend on how the people of the state, particularly property owners, will react to it in the next few days. For the government, however, this is a decision based on a desire to upgrade the database of landowners in the state and keep proper track of houses and their locations. And now to the arts. Francis Nkuda is an artist based in Calabar, Cross River State, South South Nigeria. His works of art speak volumes about his environment. He plays a key role 
uh, during the Calabar Carnival, designing costumes, props and art. Our interview tonight takes a look at how Francis prepares before participating in any show. Francis Mkuda is an artist who paddles his trade in Calabar across the state, working on paintings, sculptures, fabrications and dressmaking for many years now. Today, he has his hands full, but he takes time from his busy schedule to greet us and talk about his artistic journey and the experience working in Calabar. I have been an artist uh, most, uh, most of my life, uh, but uh, a practicing artist for about uh, 15, about roughly 17 years. I've worked with uh, the government for a bit and I've worked with the private sector for a bit, but basically what, uh, what I, I love to do is the arts. So I just find that if, when I come to the arts, I, I am myself. big part of the Calabar Carnival and tells us all the work that goes on behind the scenes before D-Day. Apart from the winning, the streaks of winnings that we've had, um, I think what, what excites me is when I see, when I say story, you know we have a story, when I see the, the, the end product of the story on the road and then we see the entirety of the picture, you know, the, the, how the different parts of the art merges on the road, that's what excites me. Although he studied geography and regional planning at the University of Calabar and hospitality management with the National Open University of Nigeria, his art development has been basically through online studies and research, as he's always anxious to learn something new. A wall moral I did in Oweri. Yes, that, that's, that's, that's like my biggest job in one place. I had to paint the entire building, he's put a wall mural on it. And it's, it's, it's a style I created. And I've had it for years in my mind, it's just juggling in my mind, a certain uh, art style. And then I had the opportunity to put it, to bring it to life. And the quest for knowledge seems to be paying off. If one takes a critical look at his works of art, the curves, lines and colors. This is acrylic painting on black canvas. Well, this is a form of expressionism. You know, you can have, you can see some um, some realism in it, but it's it's more of the style is more of expressionism. Uh, the inspiration I got from um, for doing this, you know, back when I was in secondary school, I used to, I used to I like to draw a lot with the biro. So this is biro portrait, you know, biro and acrylic. You know, so I used the biro, I used the black biro, I used acrylic for the colors, and then. For the portraits. For him, inspiration can be found in the most unlikely places and it pushes him to get the materials to bring that idea to life. Next on the news at 10, Nigeria's Super Eagles begin the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifying campaign on a winning note in Ndola, Zambia. We'll have more in sports news. Please stay with us.